Celebrity chefs will tell you that the secret to perfectly scrambled eggs is creme fraiche. This is eggs we're talking about, one of the universal foods. Lizards eat eggs. Creme fraiche is the antithesis of universal. Gordon Ramsay can slob my hog. Scientific sounding nerds with long hyphenated names will tell you that adding salt before cooking the eggs will ruin the texture. And if you want to know why this type of kitchen lore still permeates the internet, take a second to do a Google search for why I cut the ends off of ham, a story enjoyed by pastors at sermons, verbose psychologists, and fitness promoters alike. Any snobby salt savant spouting superstitious pseudoscience can s -s -s slob my hog. Food is one of the most subjective subject matters in the entire history of the world. If you think that there's one trick, one secret, one method that's going to yield the perfect scrambled egg, you're wrong. Here's how I've been doing my two eggs a day for the past three years. Oh, my heart. Crack two eggs into a bowl. Add milk if you like, add cream if you like. Just keep it to a minimum. If I've just made pancakes, I'll crack the eggs into that bowl, whip it up, maybe I get a little bit of batter into it, nice and fluffy, IHOP style, or just keep it plain egg. Ain't nothing wrong with that. By now I know that two large eggs need a one finger pinch of coarse kosher salt and eight turns of my pepper mill. Your mileage may vary. Using a fork, scramble your eggs in a circular motion, not according to the circumference of your bowl, but according to your wrist. Up, away, down, and back. Up, away, down, and back. Just keep going until everything looks more or less homogenous. Have you noticed that when you're cooking four or six eggs, it actually comes out better than if you're cooking just two? It's because your pan is too big. So I actually went and picked up the cheapest five inch nonstick skillet that I could find because the average lifespan of a nonstick skillet is comparable to a newborn fruit fly with SIDS. So whenever this loses its perfect nonstick coating, I can just toss it. No love lost. This preheated for a minute over medium heat and I just need enough butter or coconut oil to coat the bottom. Before the butter gets browned, pour in the eggs. If the pan is too hot, you'll see the edges solidify immediately. It's always better to err on the side of not hot enough. I'll use my silicone spatula to scrape the bowl so I get my money's worth and I start stirring gently. And if you're in the market for a real life changing tool, consider the Dioro silicone spatula. I don't need to go on and on about why these things are so great because so many people already have, but damn, for real, I love these things. To cook, alternate between stirring and swiping. I like to stir first to encourage the formation of small curds before anything starts to set up, and then swipe the edges every couple of seconds to get the thin bits back down. Basically, you wanna make sure that as soon as part of the egg has solidified, you get it back in there with the liquid portion. Keep things moving so there's never a spot at the bottom or sides getting overcooked. You can go do something else in your kitchen for maybe eight seconds of unattended time max. And that number gets smaller and smaller the closer your eggs get to done. For me, this is where I like to turn the heat off. You'll have to train your own eye over time according to your own preference and how hard you like it cooked. For me, I like a nice soft scramble, so I still want about that much gloss and sheen left on it when I take it off the pan. Because remember, eggs are gonna keep cooking after you turn the heat off and after you plate them. I've got no shade to throw at those who prefer their scrambies dry with no liquid remaining. I grew up eating hard scrambled eggs and they still have a time and a place. Have you ever tried making a takeaway breakfast burrito with delicate soft scrambled eggs? The leakage is uncontainable. During the scrambling phase, I extolled the virtues of using what you've got. And that applies to toppings as well. If I'm feeling a little jazzy, I might add two drops of tapatio before I do my last couple of swipes to the eggs. If I've got it, I'll do a teaspoon or two of very finely minced chives. I know, by the way, that in the time it takes for me to scramble these eggs, I can take a thick slice of sourdough toast, have it ready to go for a six minute breakfast that works every time, no creme fraiche required.